Hi. Good morning, dear students. How are you today? I hope you're doing fine. Last time was your, was the end week of our first quarter lessons, and it is also the week uh, for your examination. Well, today you will be learning on hand tools and equipment in computer hardware servicing. So, before I start, let me present to you first the objectives, in which by the end of this lesson, you are expected to First, use appropriate hand tools and test equipment and observe the proper use of hand tools. Let us begin with the definition of terms. The, these terms will help will be a big help in our lesson for this morning. Now let's have first the bin. It is a container or enclosed space for storage. The computer chassis, the enclosure that contains most of the components of a computer, the diagnostic tools it used to test the integrity of circuits and the quality of electric electricity in computer components and to test the functionality of computer, the hazard which is the risk or dangers, insulation, a material that reduces or prevents the transmission of heat or sound or electricity. Nuzzle, a protecting part with an opening as at the end of a hose for regulating and directing a flow of fluid. Preventive, it is intended or used to prevent or hinder. Static electricity. An accumulation of electric char charge on an isolated body tool, a handheld device that aids in accomplishing a task. Toolkit, this is a set of tools designed to be used together or for a particular purpose. Now the acronyms, we have the ESD or which is not which is also known as or stands for the electrostatic Distra discharge the usb or the universal serial bus and the lcd which is stand for liquid crystal display now let us move to the proper tool selection a tool is a handheld device that aids in accomplishing a task. Tools range from a traditional metal cutting part of a machine to an element of a computer program that activates and controls a particular function. So, a tool it is a device or implement, especially one held in the hand. It is used to carry out a particular function. Now, preparing for the task to be undertaken includes proper tool, select, tool selection. So, how do you select the best tool for a job? First, know and understand in detail the scope of work to be accomplished. Second, Plan for the scope, taking into account the sequence of tasks. Selecting the best tool for each task requires training in the proper use of the tools, field experience in their safe use, and following the manufacturer's guidance and instruction for that specific tool. So, choosing or selecting the right tool for a project can sometimes be easy. Or a job. So when obtaining the tool, all the associated tooling and consumable parts, as recommended by the by the manufacturer, must be included. In addition, related consumable parts must also be selected and used according to their manufacturer's instruction.
So now safe use we are now on the safe use of tools. Okay. Once selected, use the tool for the purpose for which it was designed. Not all tools come with detailed instructions, but there are those that do spell out the safety, the do's and don'ts for your safety. So if there are set upon set up or use options operator, judgment must always be based on what is the safest way to use the tool. So in order to have a safe use of tools, we should know the do's and don'ts for our safety. Now let us move to the environmental safety and health program requires the following. All tools be kept in good condition with regular ma maintenance. So you must be you must see to it that the tools is in a good condition. Second, the right tool be used for the job. So you should very careful very careful to the tools you should know the right tools what you are going to use next each tool be examined before use and damage or defective tools not to be used another tools be operated according to manufacturer's extra instruction so you must be aware or follow the manufacturer's instruction and the right protective equipment for the tool and activity be used. Okay, let us move to the hardware tools. So to complete hardware repairs, it is important to have a tool kit that should contain all of the necessary tools. As you gain experience, you will learn which tools to have available for different types of jobs. So the hardware tools are grouped into these four categories, namely, first, the ESD or the electrostatic discharge tools, second, the hand tools, and the third, Cleaning tools, di diagnostic tools. Now let us discuss first the ESD tools or the electrostatic discharge. So static, ele static electricity is easily generated by friction on carpets, tile flooring, clothing, hair fabric and etc grounded and anti-static work mats used with anti-static so the friction of moving air alone with charge suspended particles and cause the build up of static electrical electrical charges on people and object in the environment so the static wrist straps provide the most basic means for the control discharge of ele electrostatic electricity so these are the following are the examples of ESD tools we have two examples first the anti-static wrist strap and second the, the anti-static mat okay the anti-static wrist strap it, it is used to prevent ESD damage to computer equipment. So, anti-static wrist strap, it is also known as the ground bracelet. 
So you wear the strap and connect the cord to a grounding surface. So these special wrist straps help to prevent the buildup of static electricity which can damage sensitive electronic components and other devices that might be worked on. Next is the anti-static mat. It is used to stand on a pl or place hardware on to prevent static electricity from building up. So, it is designed to help lessen the effects of an electrostatic discharge on an individual or static sensitive component. It also assists in preventing explosions and fires when working with flammable material found in certain gases and liquids. Now let us proceed to the hand tools. A hand tool is a device for performing work on a material or a physical system using only hands. The hand tools can be manually used employing force or electrically powered using electrical current. So the following are the examples of hand tools. First, we have the flat head screwdriver. It is used to loosen or tighten slotted screws. So it is a screwdriver with a wedge shaped flat tip used to tighten or loosen screws that have straight linear notch in their heads. This is arguably the most common tool on a planet the ubiquitous flathead screwdriver. Another example of hand tools is the Phillips head screwdriver. It is used to loosen or tighten cross head screws. So it is designed to be used with a type of screw that has a slot in its top that looks like a cross. Another is the Torx screwdriver. It used to loosen or tighten screws that have a star-like depression on the top, a feature that is mainly found on laptop. It is shaped like a six-pointed star and too many users is simply referred to as a star screw that requires star screwdrivers of a star bit to install them. Next is the hex driver. Sometimes called a nut driver is used to tighten nuts in the same way that a screwdriver tightens screws. It is a small handheld tool that's used for driving bolts and screws with hexagonal socket. So it is also known as the Allen key. Okay. Another hand tool is the needle nose plier. It used to hold small parts. It is also known as the long nose plier. It is used to cutting and holding pliers. Um, it is used mostly by artisans and jewelry designers, network engineers, and other tradesmen to bend, reposition, and snip wire. So although they are commonly used to cut and bend small wires and electrical wiring, needle nose pliers have other uses. It has also have uses. Uh, it has also other uses as well. They can bend, cut, and grip where fingers and other tools are too big or clumsy. Next is wire cutter. It used to strip and cut wires. 
So it is an edge tool in cutting wire. It is also known as diagonal pliers. So this is intended for cutting of wire. Tweezers used to manipulate small parts. So these are small tools used for picking up objects too small to be easily handled with the human fingers. The tool is mostly like or most likely derived from tongs, pincers, or scissors like pliers used to grab or hold hot objects since the dawn of recorded history. Now part retriever. It is used to retrieve parts from location that are too small for your hand to fit. It is used to retrieve screws, although it is also helpful in retrieving jammed bits in the motherboard. They mainly come in sizes ranging from 4 to 9 inches. And last is, lastly is the flashlight. It is used to light up areas that you cannot see well, which is very common to us, the flashlight. So that was the examples of hand tools. Now let us move to cleaning tools. Having the appropriate cleaning tools is essential when maintaining or repairing computers. Using these tools ensures that computer components are not damaged during cleaning. So the examples are to be found. First, the lint-free cloth. It is used to clean different computer components without scratching or leaving debris. Okay. A lint-free lint cloth is a special type of cleaning cloth that, that does not give up any fluff when used. Being free of lint means the cloth is less likely to build up a charge, which can cause ESD or electronic static dis discharge damaging electronic equipment like HD televisions, computer monitors, and digital cameras. Another cleaning tools can be we can also use the compressed air. It is used to blow away dust and debris from different computer parts without touching the components. With computers and electronics, compressed air is preferred method for removing dust and dirt from sensitive electronic. Another next is the cable ties. It is used to bundle cables neatly inside and outside of a computer. So the cable ties fasteners that bundle your cables and wires together to keep them organized and prevent damage. They come in different sizes. <coughs> lengths, materials, and even colors. Another is parts organizer. It used to hold screw, jumper, fasteners, and other small parts and prevents them from getting mixed together. So in other words, it, organ it organizes various computer parts according to the size and quantities of the computer parts. So that was the example of the cleaning tools. Now let us go to the diagnostic tools.
Computers are easier to use and more dependable with each new generation of hardware and operating system update, but that doesn't mean they're problem-free. So here are the most popular tools for diagnosing your computer problems. We have the multimeter. It used to test the integrity of circuits and the quality of electricity in computer components. Multimeter, it is also known as multitester. It is a test tool used to measure two or more electrical values, principally voltage, current, and resistance. It is a standard diagnostic tool for technicians in the electrical or, or electronic industries. Okay. Another diagnostic tool is the loopback adapter. You, it is used to test the functionality of a computer port. So the loopback adapter or the loopback cable it is uh, it is used to test physical ports to identify network issue. It provides system test engineers a simple but effective way of testing the transmission capability and receiver sensitivity of network equipment. Now let us proceed to the proper use of ESD tools. Okay, the proper use of anti-static wrist strap. First, you have to connect the cable to the metal chassis of the computer. Next, wrap the strap around your wrist. The connection will keep your body at the same voltage or potential as the computer. Then, attach the wire on the same side of the equipment as the arm wearing the anti-static wrist strap to keep the wire out of the way while you are working. Now, caution! Never wear an anti-static wrist strap if you are repairing a monitor or CRT, the hazard rate tube. So you should not wear an ASD wrist strap, which is known as the or the anti-static wrist strap, when working inside the CRT monitor because of the high voltages there. Now, the proper use of anti-static mat. First, you have to lay the computer on the mat. Then, then connect the computer to the mat with the cable. Next, you have to connect the mat to a reliable electrical ground with, with his cable. And finally, now you and the computer are at ground potential. So, reducing the potential for ESD reduces the likelihood of damage to delicate circuits or components. Next will be the proper use of hand tools. So, you must use the proper type and size of screwdriver by matching it to the screw. Do not over tighten or do not over tighten screws because the threads may become stripped. So caution, if excessive force is needed to remove or add a component, something may be wrong. Another caution, the magnetized tools should not be used around electronic devices. Pencils should not be used inside a computer because the pencil's lead can act as a conductor and may damage the computer components.
so you must be aware of that and you must be aware what is the proper use of hand tools now let us move to the proper use of cleaning tools to clean computers and accessories first use mild cleaning solution and lint free cloth to clean computer cases outside of monitor LCD screen CRT screen and mouse use compressed air to clean heat zinks use isoprofil alcohol and lint free swabs to clean ram then finally use handheld vacuum cleaner with a brush attachment to clean a keyboard so caution before cleaning any device turn it off and unplug the device from the power source so you must be aware of it so do not do not start clean the device if it is in turn if it is on again proper use of cleaning materials keeping computers clean inside and out is a vital part of min maintenance program dirt can cause problems with the physical operation of fans buttons and other mechanical components so let's have first the computer cases and monitors clean computer cases and the outside of monitors with a mild cleaning solution on a damped lint free cloth mix one drop of dishwashing liquid with four ounces of water to create the cleaning solution so if any water drips inside the case allow enough time for the liquid to dry before powering on the computer for the lcd screens do not use ammoniated glass cleaners or any other solution on an lcd screen unless the cleaner is specifically designed for the purpose harsh chemicals will damage the coating on the screen there is no glass protecting these screens so be gentle when cleaning them and do not press firmly on the screen for the crt screens or the cathode ray tube to clean the crt monitors dampen a soft clean lint free cloth with distilled water and wipe the screen from the top to bottom then use a soft dry cloth to wipe the screen and remove any streaking after you have cleaned the monitor clean dusty components with a can of compressed air blow out the dust using short short burst from the can never tip the can or use the compressed air can upside down So, do not allow the fan blades to spin from the force of the compressed air. Hold the fan in place. Fan motors can be ruined from spinning when the motor is not turned on. Component contacts. You must clean the contacts on components with isoprofil alcohol. Do not use rubbing alcohol. Make sure that the contacts do not collect any lint from the cloth or cotton swab. Blow any lint off. The contact will compress air before reinstallation. And for the keyboard, clean a desktop, desktop keyboard with compressed air or small handheld vacuum cleaner with a brush attachment.
caution, never use a standard vacuum cleaner inside a computer case. The plastic parts of a vacuum cleaner can build up static electricity and discharge to the components. Use only vacuum approved for electronic components. And for the mouse, use glass cleaner and a soft cloth to clean the outside of the mouse. Do not spray glass cleaner directly on the mouse. If cleaning a ball mouse, you can remove the ball and clean it with glass cleaner and a soft cloth. Wipe the rollers clean inside the mouse with the same cloth and do not spray any liquids inside the mouse. So that's how you're gonna clean it. So, and that's the end of the presentation. So, do you have any question? If none, you can start answering your activity or quiz which is uploaded to your e-learning path. Go to the e-learning site of a triple www.gaetf.com. So, if there is any clarification or confusion regarding to your activity, you can do contact me with this number, 0908 So you can message or call me anytime. Thank you so much for listening and God bless, God bless everyone.